Boeing and Airbus, the world's two biggest plane manufacturers. Neck and neck for years, America versus Europe. But this year, things are a little different. See, while both companies have suffered from cancelled orders and supply chain woes caused in part by the COVID pandemic, Boeing has also had to deal with this. An Indonesia passenger plane crashing into the sea. The new Boeing 737 crashing. The US is grounding all Boeing 737 MAX planes. The turmoil has left Boeing in a position of weakness, one that Airbus has been trying to capitalize on. And that's got people asking, what can Boeing do to catch up? Well, let's find out. So I'm at Farnborough Air Show and I first started coming here over a decade ago and every single year the race between these two manufacturing giants has dominated the skies and the headlines. The one question that everyone normally asks is who secured more orders and nudged ahead of the other? But this year, Boeing has a bigger challenge ahead. And if there's one person who knows about the scale of that challenge, it's our Boeing reporter Andrew Tangle. Boeing came into this year's Farnborough nearly 2,000 narrow-body jet orders behind Airbus. They are fairly far behind, at least in the narrow-body market. While orders for the MAX have been picking up since it won regulatory approval in most countries, in China, a country that Boeing chief executives call crucial, recovery has been slow as the plane was only recertified in December and is yet to return to the skies. On top of the hurdles with the 737 MAX, Boeing has also been plagued with production issues and hasn't been able to deliver its wide-body plane, the 787 Dreamliner. And that has left the door open for Airbus. So really what we're seeing is, is this dynamic where Airbus is, is coming to the show on a much stronger ground, on a much stronger footing uh, than they really have been, you know, at least since I've been covering the industry, but for much longer as well. That's Ben Katz, WSJ's Airbus reporter, and he told me that when the pandemic struck, Airbus cut its production rates from 60 A320 jets a month to just 40. However... Airbus is now saying, you know, by 2025, we want to get to a rate of 75 a month. That is higher than we were before the pandemic, uh, higher than those ambitions that they had. Their strategy appears to be paying off, as Airbus recently won an enormous order of nearly 300 A320s from Chinese carriers. Even without that, they're leading Boeing on orders for narrow-body aircraft, 59% to 41%, according to data from Ascend. But Airbus still has issues of its own. Airbus, at, at running at rate 75, it's just really, really ambitious, and it allows them to, to sell a lot more aircraft. You know, even a, a few months ago, speaking to Airbus's you know, head of sales, you know, he was complaining, we just can't make these aircraft fast enough. So is there a way back for Boeing? Well, for starters, the company is hopeful that it will finally get regulatory approval for the new variants of its 737 MAX planes. And sales of the 787 Dreamliner are set to pick up once the company can start delivering them again. Stan Deal, the commercial chief at Boeing, suggested that once the Dreamliner is able to be delivered again after a drought of nearly two years, that more orders for those planes will follow too. But as Boeing is still hundreds of orders behind and is still operating in a world of supply chain snarls, it's anybody's guess how long it could take for balance to be restored to the duopoly. Boeing's got time to catch up uh, beyond just the air show. Customers want to see Boeing execute. That means planes without production issues delivered on time, reliably, and so forth. Whatever happens, one plane manufacturer that we'll be watching closely is Chinese state-owned Comac, who is about to release a narrow-body plane of its own. The company may not have much of an impact on the duopoly in the short term, but the potential for a heavily subsidized Chinese plane manufacturer to disrupt these two industry giants in the decades to come is very real.